From KARK4 and Fox 16, this is a special report. Here's Mitch McCoy. Hello and good morning to you. I'm Mitch McCoy from here in Studio B in Little Rock. We're standing by for Mayor Frank Scott Jr. along with the Little Rock School District Superintendent Michael Poor. They're coming to the podium where they're going to be discussing a major grant that has just been awarded to um, the city of Little Rock and the Little Rock School District in regards to violent crime, specifically how to combat violent crime in the city of Little Rock. This comes after uh, a very violent weekend in our city, multiple shootings. We're still going through those reports. We're seeing uh, right there, you see Congressman French Hill there uh, alongside the mayor as they announced this major uh, DOJ grant, Department of Justice grant. We're seeing also uh, some city directors, Ken Richardson and Kathy Webb uh, there as well. Also looking, uh, looks like we have other uh, new city director, Virgil Miller there uh, in uh, to the mayor's or to the superintendent's right. Let's listen in live here. Mayor Frank Scott Jr. announcing this major grant. Well, good morning. Uh, today is a, a great day uh, as we begin to share a major announcement that connects both our community schools model as well as what we do to continue to reduce um, community violence here in the city of Little Rock. Before we get started, I want to take time to recognize our elected officials. We are uh, grateful uh, to have Congressman French Hill, who's with us today. He will give some remarks. Uh, we have uh, also a member of U.S. Senator John Bozeman's office, Mr. Jimmy Harris, is here uh, in the back. Uh, we have our city directors, Ward 1 City Director Virgil Miller, Ward 2 City Director Ken Richardson, Ward 3 City Director Kathy Webb. Uh, let's give them a round of applause. Uh, also here today, uh, we have Superintendent Mike Poor uh, and the newly uh, voted upon uh, school board president, Mr. Greg Adams. Uh, as we stand here today, we stand here in Stevens Community Center, uh, which is one of our uh, resident community schools. Uh, we embarked in 2019 uh, to create a strategic partnership with the Little Rock School District, sharing that we were going to put our money where our mouth was. Uh, the city of Little Rock Board of Directors voted uh, for close to half a million to upwards of a million dollars to focus on a community schools model that connects the city of Little Rock to the Little Rock School District to help address uh, our most vulnerable children and some of our most vulnerable schools within our school district. Uh, that helped lay the, the pathway for our local school board to come back under local control under the leadership of Superintendent Mike Poor. And we're grateful for that relationship and that journey that we've walked alongside each other. Uh, it does not happen without the members of City of Little Rock Board of Directors who voted uh, for that budget line item. But also, it helped pave the way for us to appoint our Chief Education Officer, Dr. Jay Barth, to help lead that process and co-lead it alongside Superintendent Poor and Dr. Darian Smith. So we're very grateful. We stand here today understanding uh, that as we continue to focus on community schools to continue to address educational achievement, we also understand that we are experiencing violent crime in the city of Little Rock. We are grateful that the men and women of the Little Rock Police Department have focused on Operation Ceasefire, Operation Grant, that has tremendously dropped our violent crime rate from 22 percent to close to 10 percent. And we give great honor to the men and women of the Little Rock Police Department that have driven our violent crime down. But we also understand that it's more than just the resources and the needs of the men and women of the Little Rock Police Department. It also takes a holistic community approach. And through that community approach, we have what we're working on with our community schools model, but also the work that we've done through the city board to leverage close to $2 million for community violence intervention proposals that are now underway and are due back here in the next week to put more dollars on the street to get more organizations involved within the community to continue to help drive down our community violence. But we're excited today that we announce that in addition to the efforts of our community violence reduction plan that started in that started several months ago, in addition to the work that the men and women of the Little Rock Police Department, that our community schools model has won 
a burn, a U.S. Department of Justice burn grant of a million dollars to continue to focus on community violence through our community schools model. So we're excited about that today. We want to now take time to bring Dr. Jay Barf to give us a little bit more details about that. Dr. Barf. Thanks, Mayor, and uh, happy holidays uh, to you all. Uh, we are thrilled that the U.S. Department of Justice has awarded a $1 million burn criminal justice innovation program grant to the city of Little Rock. This project led by the city, but possible only because of an array of partners who have been central to the planning work uh, to date, seeks to both serve the students and staff at uh, Stevens Elementary, one of our community schools in collaboration with the Little Rock School District, and to transform the relationship between the community and the Little Rock Police Department in the Stevens community over the coming three years. The grant is titled Community Schools as a Hub for Promoting Personal Resilience and Neighborhood uh, Empowerment. As that title denotes, this grant is all about fleshing out three of the key pillars of the community school model that we have implemented in partnership with the Little Rock School District at four elementary schools, including Stevens Elementary, which is just behind that wall. And the unique nature of the physical plan here with, phys with the, the community center on this side of the wall and uh, the school on the other side of the wall creates tremendous opportunities uh, for this uh, work. One of those pillars of the community school model is providing supports that are needed by students so that they can be their best academically. Supports in the form of enhanced behavioral health services was needed at schools, schools like Stevens before COVID. As I think Mr. Poor and Mr. Carlock will certainly agree, the need is even more dire today. With this grant, we will hire two social workers to be, uh, to be based at Stevens. One will focus on uh, primarily on what's going on inside the school. The other will focus more on the external community, but they will, they will work as, as partners. Importantly, through a combination of grants and city funds, we are now on the path to having social workers in place at all four community schools in the next couple of months. And that's a great accomplishment. This grant will also aid in the enhancement of the positive behavior and intervention systems already established here at Stevens Elementary, which uh, I know uh, Mr. Carlock and his team are very uh, proud of. The second pillar that this grant directly addresses is employ employing community schools as a hub for meeting the needs of parents and community members. This recognizes that for students to be their best, they must come of age in neighborhoods that are healthy in all respects from being food secure to having accessible green spaces. A key challenge facing a number of Little Rock neighborhoods, of course, is violence that produces trauma for residents of all ages, including those in their earliest and most formative years. Through the program created through this grant, services will be provided to protect and empower those who have been too often the victims of violence, particularly violence that take place under their own roof. The evidence-based programs that will be offered at Stevens Elementary and at this community center have as their ultimate goals the promotion of trust between police and neighborhood residents and the empowerment of residents in making their community safer and less violent. That ties directly to a third pillar of the community school model promoted by this grant, the empowerment of those who have historically felt disempowered to better their communities and the institutions that are a part of them. In this program, community members are explicitly viewed as the experts on what is needed to ameliorate violence in their communities because they do know best what will produce sustained positive change in their neighborhoods. Work that led to this grant began my second week as Chief Education Officer when our former colleague at the city, Melissa Bridges, and I began meeting with a team from the University of Arkansas's Department of Sociology and Criminology about how we could best work together to apply evidence-based approaches to transforming the neighborhood in which students and families at Stevens Elementary live. We are so thankful that the U of A team, including Drs. Grant Drove, Casey Harris, and Sean Thomas, have remained dedicated to this work and will be central to its ongoing planning and evaluation. Along the way, of, of course, we have joined in partnership with Predict Align Prevent, a nonprofit organization dedicated to stopping child maltreatment before it happens through the use of geospatial data. Predict Align Prevent is pr represented here today by Brandy Daly, uh, PAPS project, project facilitator and spokesperson. 
The outstanding grants team at the city, Amanda Jones and Josh Fout, was central to this work, of course, as was the Little Rock Police Department that sees this work as an extension of its commitment to community-based policing. We also appreciate the support of the Midtown uh, Neighborhood Association. Mr. Uh, Faye Davis uh, is here today. The Coalition Against Sexual Assault, represented today but by its Executive Director, Moni Johnson, and the Arkansas Coalition Against Domestic Violence, represented today by Executive Director Beth Goodrich. Of course, the most central partners in this work are the Little Rock School District, led by our friend Superintendent Mike Poor, and the Stevens Elementary community, led by Principal Philip Harlock and Community School Coordinator Marthel Hadley. It's important to thank, for me to thank not just those who were central to this grant, but those who have been so important in getting our community school work off the ground despite the challenges created by the pandemic. With this grant, we have received grants over $2.2 million from a variety of foundation and other entities. Those, those dollars will fund arts oriented after school, behavioral health programming, bike education programs, food pantries, uh, school, um, school gardens and green uh, spaces to name just a few things. Just as important are the partnerships that produce important services that aid the students and families daily across the community schools so they can live up to their full potential. The future of Little Rock depends upon us getting this work right. I now turn it back over to Mayor Scott. Thank you, Dr. Barth. Uh, what Dr. Barth will share today is, is, is the culmination of creativity, communication, and collective work. Uh, and it takes this type of community approach to focus on not only education, but also community violence. And that is the reason why we're taking this system-wide approach to continue to drive down the already being reduced crime in our city. Uh, but again, as I often share, nothing happens without the collective work of the city board. Uh, and so today, uh, City Director Kathy Webb, who's also the chairperson of our Children and Youth and Families Commission, which is very critical in when we set the pathway to have the community schools model be funded through the city of Little Rock. Director Webb. Thank you, Mayor Scott. A great deal has changed in the years I've been involved as a citizen, a nonprofit leader, and a policymaker on issues that impact our families. We tended to work in silos, not connecting the dots to a holistic approach. For example, just a short decade ago, we were passing quality education programs, but did little to address other issues that impact a child's ability to thrive. Coming from the anti-hunger space, we know that kids who are hungry don't do as well as in school, that they make more trips to the school nurse and the school principal and have more absentees. Anti-hunger groups now work closely with elected officials at every level, with education leaders and school districts like the Little Rock School District to make sure our kids have the food they need, both at school through programs like Breakfast in the Classroom and after school and in the summer through programs like our city's own Be Mighty campaign. This makes a tremendous difference, but we also know that we need more for kids and their families to thrive. We know that kids who have suffered trauma or adverse childhood experiences are gonna be affected for years and their life opportunities can be diminished. We also know that community protective factors and family protective factors greatly benefit these students and their families. The work done through the Commission on Children, Families, and Youth and community programs is a great assist, and the residents of Little Rock deserve credit for supporting these programs. More recently, the addition of community schools, thanks to Mayor Scott, as well as Superintendent Poor, Dr. Boer, Dr. Poor, Dr. Barth, the Board of Directors, and many others, takes these supports to the next level, creating several of the opportunities considered by experts to reduce risk, like family support, food support, tutoring, and social and emotional learning. The Burn Criminal Justice Innovative Program Grant announced today will take those supports even further. I applaud Mayor Scott, our grant team of Amanda Jones and Joss Fout, Congressman Hill, 
and all who work to help us secure this grant and the comprehensive approach. Thank you. Thank you so much, Director Webb. Uh, we'll now have uh, Dr. Poor, who will come up again. Um, we've been through a lot with Dr. Poor here in the city of Little Rock. I remember the first time we met, we met at Copper Grill uh, as he was getting ready to become the superintendent. And boy, we would not know we would go through all that we've gone through over those past five years. Um, I wasn't mayor then. I was just a community uh, servant. Uh, you weren't necessarily superintendent then, but we would not have known we would have gone through a pandemic together, let alone this community schools model. Uh, but it doesn't happen without your leadership as well as the leadership of the Little Rock School District Board of Directors. Dr. Poor. Thank you. We got we to gotta get away from calling me doctor, though, because I, I got somebody fired at one time, and I plan to stay working in this district for another uh, six months. So. I uh, want to keep at it, uh, but I, I appreciate what the mayor said, and I appreciate his friendship and his partnership, as well as with Dr. Barth and the city directors, and I'm proud of our, our school district and our board for being behind the community school model. You know, initially, when that model came in, I think there were some people who said, well, that's just a little phrase, and it's just another nice thing to say, here's a way to get out of state control, but it has so much more depth. It's about being proactive. It's about trying to create connections. When you think of what's going on in our city or cities all over the country right now, and school districts all over the country where there's challenges with behavior, challenges with mental health, the best thing we can do for young people is create deeper connections. It's about food, it's about libraries, it's about having a plan inside the school to make sure that there's health care provided, that there's mental health care provided, and those things aren't easy. And so this grant is really a big deal to me and to our district, and most importantly, it's going to be a big deal to our kids. This school right here, Stevens, as a community school, I just sent something out to someone uh, this, this morning that said, you want to go look at models of what a community school model looks like? You can't get a whole lot better than Stevens. It's got a health clinic here. It's got a, uh, mental health facilitators coming in on a daily basis. Uh, we've got a, a really cool plan. If a kid, he gets to have banking, okay? There's over $10,000, excuse me, $20,000 in bank in information, uh, kids donating or not donating, uh, putting in uh, money to their bank accounts, $20,000, okay? That's a game changer. Where else is there a bank right around this area? They got one here at this school, okay? We need to do more of those kind of things, and I think that's what this grant's about. The idea of social workers is really a big deal, and I'm so grateful that, that we get to be a part of it. Uh, turn my... Uh, thing now to uh, the principal at the school, Philip Carlock, who is um, the person that's really helped envision what a, a community school looks like even before uh, Mayor Scott and I got to work on it. He was already envisioning and enhancing that kind of delivery. And I'm very proud to have him be our principal at Stevens. I want to have him share a little bit about what this is like, because I can tell you right now, it wouldn't matter whether it's a principal here today with Mr. Carlock, principals anywhere in the city or in this country, there are challenges going on with our kids of this pandemic. They have had economic challenges. They have had health challenges. They've had to deal with death. There's been violence. There's the politics that, that come in and out of all of our lives. All those things leave kids in a, a degree of uncertainty. The more we create connections, the better. Mr. Carlo. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Port. I also want to give a special acknowledgement to Mayor Frank Scott, Dr. Jay Barth, um, Congressman French Hill, Superintendent Mike Poor, um, even Director Webb, who I would call freak, our frequent flyers at Stevens, not only visiting once or twice, but visiting on a consistent basis, um, even with Superintendent Poor, walking the community with me, uh, walking these uh, streets, just to knock on doors and meet community members and just see what the true needs are in the community, along with the mayor who's visit, visited frequently um, on camera, off the camera, and just always lend support. So uh, on behalf of Stevens Elementary School, um, which is part of the greater Stevens community, um, I want to say thank you and thank you to all those who are in, in attendance. Over the past two years, uh, over the past couple of years, our nation, our states, our cities, and communities have been greatly impacted by a perfect storm of unfortunate events. Um, civil unrest, social injustice, the worldwide pandemic, 
Additional to these problems, the Stevens community struggles with the hardships of poverty, um, being in a banking desert, a food desert, having limited access to educational resources, which seems to le le lend itself to a relentless cycle of crime. Thank God help is here. Thanks to the city of Little Rock, the Community Schools Initiative, and the U.S. Department of Justice for making an effort to pull back the blanket of disillusionment from the Stevens community and embracing this community with a hug of support. There's a saying, where you put your treasure, that's where your heart will be. Thank you for putting your treasure in this community. Our students will benefit from it, our families will benefit from it, and we will see a change in Stevens community. As we begin to come to a close, uh, we'll have a, a rem remark from Congressman Hill. Uh, Congressman Hill has been a dear friend to the city of Little Rock. Uh, he's been very valuable in helping us to pull down congressional dollars to fund many different projects. And so we're grateful for his presence today and his help alongside uh, our grants team and Dr. Barth and many others uh, to pull uh, this particular grant down. And so we're very grateful to have Congressman Hill uh, to share his experiences. Congressman Hill. Well, good morning. Merry Christmas, everybody. Mayor, thank you for inviting me to be a part of this important ceremony today. Mike Poor, thanks for your leadership of the school district. It's an honor to work with you and continue to work with you over the next few months. It's not over yet. And uh, Virgil Miller, my longtime friend for a quarter century joining the board. is It's a real treat to see you in, in public service and uh, directors, public servants, thank you. Principal, great to be back. Uh, this has always been for me a, 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 a place for students and their families to be centered in this neighborhood. Children's Hospital Health Clinic here is a model uh, for what should happen, and I'm a proud former director at Children's for 15 years, and I love seeing them come out of the hospital and into the community in this way, so beneficial. On behalf of Senator Bozeman and Senator Cotton, we are here to partner with our local leaders to bring change. And the city of Little Rock has said to defeat crime, to create safer communities, to create a safer environment for our kids, we're not going to sit back. We're going to engage. We're going to walk with the principal hand in hand to build safer neighborhoods. That involves our police. That involves getting guns off the streets. That involves better jobs. And we partner on workforce grants a lot, too, to try to create a better economic, dynamic environment for more of our families, get the skills they need and the work they need to produce the income they need to raise a family in a safe, well-fed, well-educated place. But what Dr. Barth has laid out today is a strategy to engage those families in some of our toughest neighborhoods and bring food, health, education, and safety all under one roof. So I'm proud to support the city's efforts here. I know John Bozeman is as well. And we know the importance of small amounts of federal dollars to partner with local energy and local dollars to bring change. So this is a happy day. Merry Christmas to everybody, and thank you, Mayor, for the invitation. Thank you, Congressman Hill. Um, as we come to a close, um, our community violence reduction plan is demonstrating the results with the great help of the men and women of the Little Rock Police Department. It doesn't happen without them, but it also takes a community-wide approach. And this community-wide approach allows us to transform our city by putting the resources where they're needed. It's a true equity-driven approach as it relates to crime. But not only do we get a chance to transform our city, we get a chance to understand that we throw away the past and build towards a true future. A future of progress, a future that understands that our youth are in mind, and that we have to prepare for our future of our youth by ensuring that we engage them and provide resources and programming for them so they do not have to live a life of crime. And by doing all of that, it allows our city to turn a new chapter. So we say thank you because it doesn't happen without this community-wide approach that you see today. Local, federal, our city directors, our local school district, nonprofit organizations doing all that we can to help our youth. Thank you so much. Have a blessed day and a Merry Christmas.
Uh, there's Mayor Frank Scott Jr. Uh, right there um, uh, announcing the, the new uh, DOJ grant, $1 million being awarded to the city of Little Rock and the Little Rock School District, uh, really a, a community approach to um, uh, combating violent crime specifically for uh, the Stevens community here in the city of Little Rock. Um, of course, RJ Burr is there and we'll have a full wrap up coming up in our newscasts uh, later today. Uh, we are uh, working on, on getting just a, 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 an interview with the mayor, which we will have in our newscasts uh, later today as well. But if you're just joining us, the mayor, along with the Little Rock School District Superintendent Mike Poor, uh, delivered a, a news conference today that announced a $1 million DOJ grant that will uh, specifically uh, focus on community, um, the Stevens community and community policing um, in terms of um, so many different resources from making sure that parents have what they need uh, to, to make sure that there is success for those kids, plus um, outside of the classroom uh, as well for community policing uh, there in uh, the Stevens area. So uh, our Jay Burr will have much more coming up on CARE K4 News. Uh, beginning at 4 o'clock and of course Fox 16 News at 530. This news conference coming off of a very violent weekend in the city of Little Rock. Multiple shootings um, uh, and, and we are still going through those reports. We'll have uh, a map of that on our website krk.com as well as we continue to go through that. For now, I'm Mitch McCoy. This has been a special report from KRK4 and Fox 16. Have a good rest of your day.